days we see people ordaining women as priests, the church being quiet about gays and lesbians taking over the world. We want to know what's your stand on this and why are you quiet America everywhere, every, nobody's talking about it. Thank you. You haven't listened to me very long, <laughs> but it's true that what we are facing in America and perhaps in some areas of Islam too, unfortunately, is nominal religion. And I do not support it. I have no truck or tracer. And I have no fear nor no doubt in saying that lesbianism is wrong and homosexuality in any shape or form is wrong and no church or any religious group has any right supporting it. Now they, they tell us, uh, and maybe I just add this a little, a little add bit because this question has been brought up twice here. They say, well, some are born with this propensity. Well, uh, Irish people are born with bad tempers, but it doesn't mean we go around exploding. We have to learn by God's grace to control our temper. And these fellows have to learn by God's grace to change their lives. By God's grace, they can. It's not that we hate a person, but we hate the deeds that drive that person to a final judgment where God will say, depart from me. Thank you. You have a question for Mr. Didat. Mr. Mr. Didat, why does God demand animal sacrifices in the Old Testament? When Abraham offered the ram, why does God demand animal sacrifices, if not to typify Jesus in the future? Please, please answer this. The same Bible says, God speaking, I need no blood. I don't need the blood of animals, less of human beings. This sacrifice of Abraham was a drama being enacted to teach the people that God needs no human blood. You see, because in the time of Abraham, in the Ur of the Chaldees, these people made human sacrifices. They sacrificed their sons to God and they sacrificed their daughters to God. Just telling them, don't do that, is not good enough for man. You have to enact a story. And this is the story which God Almighty enacted for mankind that look, he orders Abraham to sacrifice his son. And when he's ready, the Quran says, God says that look, it is your, 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 your willingness that I was interested in. Not the, the flesh of Isaac or even of sheep or goats. This is just to symbolize this is to symbolize his willingness that we are prepared to cut an animal because it symbolizes our own sacrifice. This animal is ours and we are making that sacrifice. And Jesus Christ, he gave a beautiful parable of the prodigal son. That a father had two sons. And one of these sons is telling the father, he said, look daddy, give me whatever belongs to me, my inheritance, and I want to go out into the world and be independent. So the father pleases, gives to the son whatever he was entitled to. And this guy goes to a foreign land, he joins bad company, drunkards, adulterers, gamblers and all, and he goes into the mire, into the gutter, most despicable sort of life. In that position, he realizes that if he had been with his father, he would have been better off. So he makes a return home, says Jesus. This is what Jesus says. And while the son is coming home and the father sees him at a distance, the father runs. The father runs to the son and embraces him. And he says that this my son was dead, is now alive. He was lost, he is now found. And he tells the son who was at home, it's a sacrifice, the fatted calf, to celebrate the return of the prodigal. This is the parable of the, that Jesus gave about ourselves and God. God is the father. He's got two types of children. One who is upright and with the God, and the other one who drifts off. And the one that drifts off, if he makes up his mind to return, the father, God Almighty, he runs to you and he accepts you with open arms and he makes the sacrifice the sacrifice is his own 
He's not telling the son, he says, look, you've squandered my money. Now you stay with the pigs for seven years. Look after my pigs. And after you have finished seven years of indentured labor, then you come into the house. Nothing of the kind. This is God. In other words, as soon as the person who repents, God Almighty is prepared to accept him. And he needs no blood. He needs no sacrifice. He needs your willingness to return. Do you have a question for Bishop? Yeah. I like to know why is in the Bible then the Jesus says to you guys, not to Hindus, not to the Muslim, not to the Jews, that on the day of the judgment, when you people, the Christian, get up and say that, my Lord, did I not preach in your name? And Jesus said to you, depart from me, put side. It is in your Bible. That's right. <clears throat> he doesn't say it just to Christians. He says it to anyone who attempts to prophesy or act in the name of God falsely. Anyone. Do you think that because you're some other religion, that if you attempt to act in the name of God falsely, that you're going to get by with it at the judgment? You're mistaken. My dear friend, we all have to give the same account. He doesn't use, the, the word Christian only occurs five times in the Bible. And he does not use the word Christian in that instance. Thank you. Microphone number four. Do you have a question for Sheikh Didat? Mr. Didat, this is a question. Jesus said, those who are my sheep hear my voice. Those that are not my sheep hear not my voice. What do you think of that? What do you make of it? John chapter 10, verse 23. And Jesus walked in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said, How long does thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. So Jesus says, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. In this, I and my Father are one. In this, not in power, not in knowledge, not in anything, but in this, that once the man has accepted faith, I, as a prophet of God, see to it that the man remains in faith, and God Almighty who also sees to it that they remain in faith. We are one in this. There's a sister holding a child in one of the aisles. The sister with the child. There's a sister with the child in one of the aisles. Would you come forward, please? Do you have a question for Bishop Wakefield? Assalamu alaikum. In the beach, uh, when he was talking, he was saying, Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, as a, he's the same as a lamb or the sheep sacrificed in mean, Sayyidina Ibrahim. How you can say something like this, and he is your God or even your son of God? I was quoting, I was quoting from the scripture where John the Baptist, who was the prophet, said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I also quote from the scripture where it tells us all we like sheep have gone astray. It pictures us as sheep. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Also, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. So there's the illustration of sheep is all woven in there. It was an honorable illustration because a sheep was considered without blemish. It was considered pure. It was not a pig. It was a sheep and was considered pure without blemish, and that was why it was offered. Thank you. Microphone number four, do you have a question for Sheikh Didat? Yeah. Sure. I, have, I have a question for Didat. Yeah, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. The Christian believe that Jesus is either a son of God or God. Where did Jesus say that in the Bible? And a, question, where... a question, brother, a question, not a statement. Okay, where did, where did Jesus say that he's God? And where did he say about the prophecy of Muhammad in the Bible? Jazakallah. Okay. 
Jesus never said he is God anyway, in any Bible on earth. He hasn't. I have been asking my audiences in South Africa where the percentage of Christians is far greater than what I can sense here. That if you can show me any way in your Bible, any Bible, any Bible on earth, you have hundreds of different yeah, versions. Any version where Jesus says, I'm God, or where he says, worship me. I said, I would be prepared to accept him as God, and I would be prepared to worship him. I don't speak for my brothers. They speak for themselves. But you show me in your book, any book, any Bible, and the Christian is asking me, you mean to say it's not there? I say, show me. There isn't. On the contrary, Jesus says, my father is greater than I. My father is greater than all. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Nowhere, nowhere does Jesus say, I'm God. Nowhere does he say, worship me. Microphone number one, do you have a question for a bishop? Yes. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Bishop, uh, I would like to know, and I, I want you to clarify this. Uh, is Jesus a God, or Son is God, or part of the uh, three so-called gods, or is he a prophet? Uh, I, can you, um, you, you, you almost lost me somewhere in that list. Uh, you're saying, can I re rephrase your question to try and get, see if I'm getting you? Yeah, I want to know if, uh, I know what Jesus is, but I want to ask Repeat you. Repeat the question, brother. Okay, is Jesus a God, I'm or sure. no. Son is God, or part of the three so-called gods, or is he a prophet? All right, first of all, we affirm as Christians, one God. We affirm that as strongly as any Islamic person would. Second, 